My mom tossed me my first tennis ball when I was just four years old. At 19, I turned professional, and over the next decade competed at tournaments all over the world like Wimbledon and the U.S. Open. One fall when I was home from the tour, my fitness coach invited me to go pheasant hunting. I was mesmerized watching the dogs work. It sparked in me a desire to get a dog of my own. But that wasn't going to happen anytime soon with me living alone and being on the road for much of the year. I won't give the whole story away, but a couple years later, to my complete surprise, an adorable yellow Labrador puppy came into my life. Now, I had grown up with dogs, but never a dog like Ben. He was truly the dog of a lifetime. He was constantly by my side, on the couch, in the car, on a hike, waiting patiently beside the practice court. I didn't know that I could love a dog like I loved Ben. He was not a son, but he was like a son to me. And then, in the prime of his life, I lost him. It was a dark time. The sorrow and grief were crushing. You know what I'm talking about if you've lost a beloved one. And yet, at my lowest point is when God intervened most powerfully. The comfort and strength and hope I was given during that trial was, well, I hope you'll read about it and be encouraged. My Boy Ben is a story about love and loss, but above all, it's a story about grace. The trailer for the book, My Boy Ben. And here's how you can get the book, My Boy Ben. You can go to the Christian Worldview, and if you'll use the code JAN, you'll get $2 off of the hard copy price. And David, you talk about the fact that um, you thought you were getting a hunting dog, mm -hmm. and then you got a best friend. I think people who have had dogs or a beloved cat, I know as you do, just know the kind of companionship and bond that we can have with a beloved dog or a cat. It's one of the hardest things, I think, uh, to lose. Yeah, I've talked to a lot of, you know, these kind of tough, burly guys who even have hunting dogs and so forth, and the recurring comment I always hear is, never cried so much when I lost my dog. I think people understand that, the kind of bond and closeness, that the, the, the love relationship that we can have even with a dog or a cat or any other kind of animal. Of course, again, just want to emphasize, we don't want to put that above God, our relationship with God or others, but uh, certainly that bond can be deep. And I think you are exactly right, Jan, is that this book is, of course, there's a dog story in this book about my journey with Ben from love to loss, but then it's that third part mm -hmm. that I think is so right. universally relatable is that all of us go through loss, whether the loss of a dog right. or a cat or, or a loved one. And what do we do when we face those most difficult moments in life? There's almost nothing harder in life than losing something we mm -hmm. love. And how do we get through that? And we get through it not in our own strength as believers, but we get through it with the supernatural power, the strength, the comfort, the hope, the God's grace that God gives us through his grace to help us get through the most difficult moments yeah. in life. Well, God has designed us to be relational, and we always think that's people to people, and I think in an ideal world it is people mm -hmm. to people, but he has created these little critters for us. We read about them all throughout the Bible. We even know some are in heaven. There are horses in heaven mm -hmm. for sure. Whether pets are there or not, I'm not absolutely sure, but nonetheless, he's designed us to be relational. So I don't think that everybody fully understands, getting back to the animal angle, how important it is to be greeted with that wagging tail mm -hmm. because there's something there that's bonding. There's a chapter in, in the book about why do we love our dogs so much or, or broadening that, why do we love our, our animals so much? And the reason is, is because you mentioned one, is the relational aspect because mm -hmm. God designed us to be relational and so we develop this bond over time and can have this companionship. But the second reason is, is because a dog or a cat or an animal can so enhance our lives. Like you mentioned, if you have a dog and you come home, how much better is it coming home after a long day to have your, your beloved dog there to greet you and get you into a good mood and get you out for a walk? How much better is a walk with a dog than walking alone? How much better is it having a dog on a trip and just joining you and is having a great time with he or she there? And so a dog, not only, I think God has designed them not only to build into play a, a part in their, our relational design, but 
also to enrich and enhance our lives as well. And that's certainly what Ben did yeah. for me, as it talks about in that video. Well, talk to us about the decline of Ben, because mm. it came completely out of the blue. And he was a happy hunting dog. And uh, one day things started mm-hmm. to change. Well, it was the middle of his life. He was uh, just about eight and a half years old. And we had my brother and my nephew and I had just come home from a hunting trip, a pheasant hunting trip to South Dakota. And I noticed in the trip that he uh, wasn't acting himself. And we came home and couldn't figure out what it is. And finally, we're referred to um, to getting an abdominal ultrasound is when we got just the shocking news that not only was it something just a diarrhea condition, this was a tumor in his prostate. Again, he was in the prime of his life. This was a strappingly athletic dog, vibrant. And uh, just to get that news, what just sent me into a tailspin. It wasn't like he was 14, 15 years old and near the end of his life. He was in right in the prime of his life. And that time going from... That was in January when we came home from that trip in January, February, March, and I lost him in early April of that year. It was one of the darkest times of my life, just watching him as you watched your mother, Jan, spiral downhill, watching just the effects. I think it, it really showed me the ugly effects of sin on this world. It wasn't the way God designed it to be. And to see death up close and personal. And I had my my grandparents die previously, but for some reason, this was a bit different watching this right in front of me over those three months. And it was a difficult, very, very difficult time. You even tried some, um, hoping that some experimental surgery might help him. And actually in the long run, that probably made things worse. Yeah, he was given seven to eight weeks to live uh, after being diagnosed with prostate cancer. Prostate cancer in dogs is uncommon, but it's much more untreatable than it is in humans. The Mm -hmm. only two species, if you will, that get prostate cancer are male dogs and male humans. Mm. And so when he got it, they were given seven to eight weeks, and he did die seven to eight weeks later, despite the fact that we did try to have a experimental surgery to help him. Well, again, every listener here has lost someone or something. Some people lose their health. That's just as devastating. Mm. Whatever it is, you have one day that's very, very valuable, and then the next day you'll learn that it's going to go start going downhill. How do you cope? How do you tell people to mm. cope? Now, you in the book, and this is the important thing, is that in the book, and particularly the last third of the book, you talk about what God did, Mm -hmm. particularly in your life, in your heart. So God indeed took a bad scenario, maybe not a worst case scenario, at least it wasn't your spouse, nonetheless, terrible scenario, but he was going to turn it around for good. Mm -hmm. And we can get to that in just a little bit later. But how did God begin to work in your life? How did he begin to comfort you? And by the way, I was on the phone with you a few times during the process. Mm -hmm. I believe I was even on the phone with you either the night Ben died or the night before he died. So, I mean, I kind of went through this a little bit with you since we were both at that time broadcasting heavily in the Twin Cities area. But how did God begin to work with you? Through his word. That was the means. And God always ordains and arranges circumstances, even in our lowest moments. When he seems far away, he's not. It was Easter week when Ben died. That was very significant as well, because as I went to church that week, even though I was just in a very, very down mood, immediately God was presenting me with mm. the understanding of how sin causes death, and but then there's great hope and Christ's victory over death and the cross, and how that's our ultimate hope for a world, a new heavens, a new earth, and there won't be any of that someday. But one of the first passages I came across after losing Ben was from Psalm 119. It says in verse 28, my soul is weary with sorrow, strengthen me according to your word. And uh, that's exactly described the way I was. I know you probably remember the way I was, Jan. Mm -hmm. And uh, even in that video trailer, if there's some pictures in the background of that trailer, and there's a picture of me during the time when I was losing bed, and the look on my face, you could just see that my soul was weary with sorrow. And even though I didn't really feel like reading the word at that time, I didn't feel like doing anything. I didn't feel like talking to anyone or just feel like sitting and mourning on the couch. Somehow I was just led to reading that passage. And that was the first point of saying that for me to be strengthened going forward, because I was as weak as I I ever was, I I think there were very few things in my life at that particular time. You know, I was young and I was single and I was, you know, starting into a new career and so forth in radio and writing. There were very few things in my life that could have brought me to that point. And losing Ben in the way I did at the time I did was certainly one of them, but it was God's word through that passage and then many other passages that was the promises, the true 
truths in Scripture are the things that I was clinging, hanging on to for dear life, trusting in God's character or nature to not get me over this trial, but to carry me through it. Again, the book is My Boy Ben, A Story of Love, Loss, and Grace, and uh, you can get it at The Christian Worldview, and if you use the code JAN, J-A-N, you'll get $2 off the hardcover book. The 